What's going on guys? Chef Freddie here from the Gilmore School of Culinary Arts. So today I'm going to be talking about the most important piece of equipment that a chef or an at-home cook can have. And that is a sharp knife and or sharp knives, all right? There's many different knives that chefs or at-home cooks use, all right? And today I'm going to just go through a couple of them, um, the basics, things that will get you you know, through a job, through a nice meal, through a holiday event at your house. First, I'm gonna start with a side knife and or a paring knife. This knife is like a utility knife. Um, a lot of chefs wear it in their knife coat and we just have it to use, um, you know, for side things that we're doing or on the fly. Next knife that I wanna go over is a fillet knife. Now, what you'll know about this fillet knife and see here is the flexibility that it has. So if we're filleting fish, um, or trying to get into a chicken and breaking down a chicken, the knife gives us a little bit of give way there to get under the scales, the bones, and to really get into the meat and uh, get a nice finished product. Next knife is just um, a main chef's knife here. This is a pretty large one, um, you know, industry standard for any kitchen, you know, if we're not gonna have our real chef knife with us or um, you know, we're just letting our uh, line cooks use it or our prep cooks, right? So this knife is just the, the big boy, the main knife um, that a chef will be using. Next one is a boning knife. So it doesn't have as much give as the fillet knife does. Um, but this one here is what I would use to break down the chicken to get all nice eight pieces out of um, and strictly that. This knife is um, personally my favorite knife that I have, um, but I use it as my chef knife. It's a slicer, technically it's a slicer, so it would be sli slicing prime rib with this, uh, slicing turkey with this. Um, you know, we would be using it to finish a nice product to be plattered, things of that nature, all right? Now, the most dangerous piece of equipment in the kitchen is a dull knife, right? So. I wanna get into taking care of our knives and making sure that they are always sharpened. A dull knife is the most dangerous because it will slip off food and can cut you, cut you, right? And nine times out of 10, when you're using a dull knife, you're going very hard into a product. So if it slips, your guide hand is going to get cut and it's going to hurt because you're going hard and it's not gonna be a nice cut. So chefs cut their hands all the time, right? And some of them are just open slices. They're quick, we can bandage it up, get back to work. When you're using a dull knife and you cut yourself, it's gonna be an uneven cut and you're going to really go into the meat of your hand. So let's get right into how we sharpen a knife. First thing is understanding what you're going to sharpen your knife with, right? So I have two pieces of equipment here. I have a whetstone sharpening device and I have what we call a steel. This is the last thing that I will use when going to sharpen my knife. This is going to true my blade, meaning that any imperfections on the blade from the sharpening, the wet sharpening stone, you'll take out on this steel and will even your blade all the way out. This is not to sharpen your knife. This is to finish and true your blade and even all the edges in your blade out. The whetstone. This one that I use has two sides. We're at 1,000 grit and 6,000 grit. So I'm going to start with the thousand grit up front, okay? Now when I do this, this is to take out any imperfections before I get to the steel later on. So this is gonna take out any of the imperfections in my knife and my blade here, right? And I'm gonna go at a 20 degree, 10 to 20 degree angle. I'm going to start at the heel of my edge all the way to the tip point of my edge, all right? And we're gonna go even strokes all the way across. And I like to do 10 and then I flip and I go 10 the other way. And that noise is what you're looking for. If you can hear this noise, and that is the noise you wanna hear and you know that you're giving your blade a nice stroke there and you're getting it extra sharp and we're getting all those imperfections out of your edge. All right, and then I will flip and I will go 10 more. And again, we're at a 10 to 20 degree angle. 
and we're going from the heel to the point 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 of the edge all right guys now again usually i do this three times over 10 10 10 10 10 10 and then i'd flip but for this demonstration i'm going to flip now and we're going to go to the 6000 grip all right and this is what's actually going to sharpen what we have going on here right just now we got some imperfections out now we're going to really sharpen our edge and get that nice uh thin sharpen you know when you look down you can see it looks crispy and we're going to get ready to work with some vegetables some you know any type of food product all right so again same thing here guys this is a 10 stroke 10 stroke you know from the heel to the tip of the knife we're at a 10 to 20 degree angle and we're just really getting that nice sharp edge for the knife this is very important guys again this is a chef's number one used piece of equipment it's the first thing we get you know when we go to culinary school you know you get issued your knife kit um and you know knife safety we go through knife safety before we start using our knives how to take care of them how to wash them um just super super important all right If you notice, you know, something you can always practice, right? Not everybody's in the industry and wants to be a chef, but you want to learn at home. You know, start to work neat, start to be organized, you know, have everything in its place. And that's a term I'll get into throughout this course is mise en place, right? And mise en place is a French term for everything in its place. So here I started off with all my knives laid out nice, I have my stone laid out, I have my steel and I have a blank space around me, which keeps my mind clear. As chefs or at home cooks, you always want to keep your mind clear. You don't want to work in clutter. All right, back to knife sharpening. So now the last thing, like I was saying, this is steel. What I'm working on is steel as well. I've been in kitchens where we use this sometimes because we don't have steel with us. Any piece of steel will work to true your blade. Same thing here, we're at a 10 to 20 degree angle, right? And we're going 10 each side. All right, and this right here, again, is the last step to get those imperfections out of the knife, anything we may have missed, and we're just truing that blade. We're making it as straight as possible. This is not sharpening our knife, right? So that's a big misconception in the industry um, that this actually sharpens our knife. It does not, okay? So this is just our steel, all right? And we're working it nicely. All right, so this here now is ready to go. Last thing I would do is sanitize this. I'd wipe it off before I put it into a product and I'd get to work. The last thing I wanna teach you guys is the parts of a knife. I think it's important when you're working with things to really understand the origin of things um, and understand what we have going on, you know, inside the handle here. Um, you know, so I'm gonna take it from the, t the bottom of the knife to the top of the knife, right? And I'm gonna explain what is actually going on in this knife right? And it will help you to take care of what you actually have. There's a lot that goes into the manufacturing of a knife. All right. So this part right here is our butt, all right? This is the butt of the knife. As we work our way around here, we have rivets in here. And these rivets is what through here, there's still another piece, right? And it connects the butt and brings it down to here, right? So in the rivets, we're good to go. All right. Inside there, we also have scales and we have bolsters. Right around here is the bolsters for the knife, okay? That's what's connecting our handle and the actual blade of the knife, okay, guys? So this part is very important, all right? And we have our tang. So the tang actually helps with the absorption of when we're chopping, you know, it makes it more comfortable. We're not gonna feel any shock coming back, right? And as we walk down this knife here, we have our spine, right? Just like your spine and your back is very important. The spine on a knife is important. It keeps us standing straight up, right? So if your spine is like this, so if we, you know, you have, you got to take care of your knife, right? To keep this spine, because there's nothing we can do if this bends, you know, that's, you just got to get rid of your knife, right? So again, it's all about taking care of it and understanding why this is in place and why we built or why they built knives the way they did for us chefs or at home cooks to be using, all right? And as we walk down our spine here, we'll have the point of the knife, right? This point, there's three points, to, the three things to an edge, right? The edge is what we cut with. 
This is one, this is the point, and we have the tip, right? And then we work down here where we have our heel of our knife, okay? The edge is this, this is our cutting platform, right? This is what we're always sharpening, what we keep true. We wanna keep our, our edge very true, always sharp, things of that nature. Now, I wanna go into how we're gonna hold this, right? So after we got done sharpening, and you can see as I was sharpening, I usually, it's, uh, I, I usually always hold my knife the way I'm about to start cutting it, just in case I need it. So naturally, I'm always holding it, right? If you ever played baseball, sometimes you might've heard choke up on the bat. Same thing with a knife. We always want to choke up. So I see a lot of people do one of these, right? This is not how we're going to hold a knife. How you should always hold a knife is your index finger is going to be here, right? And your thumb is going to be over here. You want positive control of the knife. Now, what I'm not doing, and when I used to train and uh, for culinary competitions, I would walk around, I would tell young culinarians to drop their knife, and I'd come feel it. And I'd see if they were holding their knife too hard, meaning they probably had a dull knife and they didn't do what I've asked them to do, or they're just, they're, they're just, you know, gripping it and gripping it and there's no need. The point of sharpening the knife is to allow it to do its job, actually cut the product you're trying to cut. There's no need to go crazy and hold your knife very strong. This is why we choke up on it. So you can guide it the way it needs to go, okay? So proper holding right here, we have our thumb on this side of the knife, we have our index finger on this side of the knife. And the video is coming forward, guys. We'll start breaking down some products and we'll teach you about some knife cuts and what we do with these nice sharpened knives. Thank you.